This part of the course is about a Python library called Pandas, designed for hand handling datasets. Obviously, any piece of data science work or machine learning has to handle data. The question is, why bother learning a library for it? Why not just code it directly? It's not like the tasks we want to perform are complicated. It's all just aggregation and grouping and so on, not challenging algorithmic stuff. The answer is there in the question. We're not doing challenging algorithmic stuff, and it's all just the same old aggregation and grouping and so on. And so it's a complete and utter waste of time for us to code it ourselves. The person who built Pandas drew on decades of experience of library design for exactly this sort of task. And so Pandas has a very concise and flexible way of expressing pretty much anything you might need to do with data. It's just that you need to reorient your thinking to get into the Pandas mindset. Once you're there, once the switch flips, then you suddenly see how to do a big fiddly sequence of data munging just by stringing together four or five different Pandas operations. Pretty much all the Pandas code you write will be one or two liners. But it is hard work to flip that switch in your head. What I suggest you do here is you work through this notebook very systematically, trying every single one of the code snippets. You need to see the outputs, so you need to get used to seeing the types of object that Pandas works on. One third of the Pandas ideas should actually be very recognizable because they're very close to SQL, which you learnt about in databases. You know, all that stuff about relations and joins and select where and group by and so on. But on top of this view, Pandas gives you two other ways of dealing with the data set. And the switch flipping moment comes when you're fluent in all three ways that it has of showing you data. So you can mix and match and pick whichever one fits your problem best. So that's the big picture stuff about Pandas. There's another part of Pandas, which is less glamorous, but still extremely useful. When you work with data, you spend 70% of your time cleaning up other people's mess, fixing up their data encoding schemes, trying to work out why what they told you isn't what's in the data set, dealing with different formats for dates and times and so on. Pandas has a huge set of tools for all of this. And if you know where to look, then you'll save, save yourself a lot of time reinventing the wheel. So that's the second goal for this part of the course, to give you enough pointers into the Pandas documentation for you to know what tools it has to offer. Let me finish with a description of Pandas that I found on Hacker News, a great site for thoughtful computer science discussion. I'll let you read. This comment is sort of true but it's also missing the mark. A lot of what computer science people do is awkward and unnatural for scientific tasks. I do find pandas infuriating in many ways, but there's also a lot that it gets right about working with data that the classic computer science approach just gets wrong.